The one thing I want to tell you about fear, I want you to welcome fear. Fear is your enemy. Fear is not you. And as much fear as you can feel, welcome that. Shake in your boots from it, but live with it. Don't escape it by taking medication. I'm not talking about physical. I'm not a doctor. I'm understand this. That when you shake in that fear, no matter it could be like like you're not going to make it, like you can barely breathe, you can barely walk, and it's in there, and you're noticing it. Don't overreact. When things happen and somebody says something, something happened to you, don't overreact. I want to encourage you to leave us in the middle, leave that empty space, and just feel that fear. Don't go into the mind for a quick excuse or why or this or that. Don't run to somebody to get a, a, a good feeling from it to make you get over it real fast because you're not getting over it that way. Fear. I want you to go into the fear, welcome the situation, and go into it, and live in it, live with it. Don't try to escape it by getting on the phone, calling up somebody, they didn't want anything, but you just call them up, because the devil said, call up, call up a Mary. Mm -hmm. And then you call that Mary up, and she ticked you off. So it was a boring conversation, right? <laughs> <clears throat> if you're gonna get drunk that night, get drunk after the fear pass. Don't get drunk during the fear, because you'll keep the fear there. Fear is not you, it's not of you, it's of your father, the devil. And he does not want to depart from you. He wants you to run from the fear, he wants you to deny the fear, he wants you to escape it. That's why he doesn't want you to be still and let the truth catch up with you, because if the truth catch up with you, he has to depart from it because the truth is the spirit of God coming down to take care of that. And, and that fear is not of God, it's not the spirit of God, it is not you, it has nothing to do with you except you believe the lie. Like what the young lady was saying, it's the thought. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything except practical thoughts, right? And so if you really, really pay attention to you, get to know you. And this year we're working on ourselves. We're doing some serious work. And you got to pay attention to it. Know thyself. The beginning of overcoming is to know thyself. And you're going to see that what's driving you is in you. Your hell is in you. It's not out there. Mm -hmm. Your hell is in you. Now, hell is out there, but it's inside other people. That's their hell. That's not our issue, right? But your hell is inside of you. And, you, and it's come from the imagination, from thoughts. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. And you can read a book, you can read the Bible, you can sing hymns, you can prophesy, you can do all that. But if you have not died from that ego, death, which is of the devil, it's all a waste of time. The devil is still your daddy. And like, like she was saying, you wake up in the morning, you're at home by yourself, your house nice, everything fine, but you have fear because you believed into a thought and didn't know it, and you thought it was your own. And you look around and everything looked fine, but you're afraid on the inside of nothing, nothing going on. But you're afraid because you believed a thought. That's all it is. And when, when something happened, the devil tell you, oh, you need to protect yourself. You need to protect your reputation. You need to protect your degree. You are a doctor. Nobody can talk to you like that. You are a mother. Look at the mothers. Mothers don't want to hear the truth because they think they're God and they don't want to hear the truth. That's not them. That's the spirit of the devil in them. But you face mama and tell her the truth anyway. Just don't resent. Tell her the truth. She just doesn't want to overcome it. But you tell the truth anyway. And then if she get mad, let her be mad. But I want to tell you, you got to take, you should welcome the fear, no matter how bad, because it's going to kill all your ideas about God, about yourself, about your body, about your little degree, about your parent role as a parent. When parents tell you, don't talk to me like that, I'm grown, I'm the grown one. 
They'll tell you, don't talk to me because you telling me the truth and that hurt. And kids are not allowed to tell parents the truth. They'll tell you, I love the devil more than I love you. <laughs> parents don't love their children, they hate their children. If they love their children, they'll let them grow up. They'll be the example so that they can stay on that. As Franklin was saying, kids are born innocent. But you traumatize them with your anger. But I want you to welcome that fear. It, that comes out of nowhere. When you open your eyes in the morning, the devil already got your mind, and you don't know that he got your mind. You believe in the devil. Anyone that believes in thoughts are worshiping the devil. And thoughts, if you think about thoughts, though, you really, really think it's so amazing. Thoughts are just an idea. It has no meaning. They have no meaning at all. But because you believe it and why you're overreacting to the thought, the devil gives you meanings around the thought. This means that you, you need it. This means that you're this. And this means you need to go to the party. And this means that and that and that. And then now you're constantly overreacting and he got you. You got to pay attention. Let the fear live with the fear and the Father will take it away from you. The light of God, because if you have truly gone and forgiven, a forgiveness is to apologize for judging. I'm raw. Yes, you're raw for screwing me up, but I'm raw for hating you for it. I'm an adult now. I see that you can't help yourself. I'm sorry for resenting you. And when you do that, God will forgive you. And he'll take the anger, which is hatred, away from your heart, which is the nature of the devil. And then the light of God will fight the darkness of the imagination, all that stuff you've been living in all your life, thinking that it's you. It's a false you. It's not you. And when that passes, the real you will appear. And in the real you, there is no fear, no doubt, no worry, no looking for love, not trying to get love, no nothing. You need nothing from no one. Except practical. You got to go to the store, bake a cake during the death, so that when the family fight, they have some cake. <laughs> cake and greens and cornbread and all that. And, uh, <clears throat> but I, I, I promise you, it's not you. It's a false identity. And all of your ideas about God is false. They're just ideas. And ideas come from the devil. He pretend to be God. And so, you, I, and so you pray to God, God, please help me. I got all this fear. Lord, help me. My mama just died. Lord, help me this. And God, like, wonder, what the? I've already helped you. You're already free. Stop identifying with those things. You'll be free. Those things are not you. You are a spirit created in the image of God. And Christ came. And he bought us back from the devil. He washed away all of those sins. You're not even a sinner or a saint. You're none of those things. They, we've been bought and paid for by Christ. And judging yourself, calling yourself a sinner, you're keeping yourself in hell. You're falsely accusing the real self. And then Satan made you judge yourself, call yourself that, and he'll judge you for it. He's like, look at you, you're a sinner. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm a sinner. And then he's like, you ain't worthy of living. Oh, yeah, I'm not worthy. <laughs> Here's a peel. Here's the knife. Go cut your throat. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not you, folks. It's evil. It's not you at all. You don't even see the real you yet. You don't know what the real you look like. I didn't know. I don't know. I'm still looking. I sure got some glimpse, though, and it just made me stay on this path. I work on me by not working on me. The more I don't work on me, the more I can see. The more I work on me, the deeper I go into darkness. Because there's no me to work on. There's nothing to work on. It's been done for you by the Son of the Father. He sent his Son, so it's all done. And all your hypochondriac and whatever, that, you're coming from a lie. You've been traumatized by your mama. Keep the house extra clean. If you don't keep it clean, you'll get a disease. I don't know if she said that, but just you're going to get a disease. And you, as a kid, you're like, oh, God. And mama frantically going through the house, clean up everything. 
she put plastic on the couch so you can't mess up the couch. I think only black and Mexicans do that. I don't think white parents do that. Why you go buy a couch and then put plastic on it? <laughs> Clean it up. Amazing, huh? But uh, uh, you are not the saint that you think you are. So I want you to welcome the fear. If you got to walk into a crowded room and everybody's going to turn around looking at you walking in, but Satan tell you, oh, don't go in there. Everybody's going to look when you walk in. Go in there. Go in there. Go toward that fear. You're going to start, I promise you, if you stay with this, stay with this, stay with this, stay with this, you will start to see that this was never you. You never had to beg the Lord for anything. It's already yours. He's already, everything belongs to his children. You never had to try to get along with anyone. But because you believe that you had, you've been taught that you had, you're looking for something from that person, you try to do it anyway, it doesn't work. All you do is go from person to person trying to get something, trying to get love, trying to get friendship, trying to get family ship, trying to get whatever it is you're trying to get. You don't need to do that. You already have it. You just don't see it because you're looking on the outside and not on the inside. The kingdom of heaven is within. It really is. And this illusion is an imposter. Satan does not want to die. He want to rule over your soul. That's why I hear rather for you to hoop and holler in prayer than to be still and let God's will be done. Because you're praying out loud and carrying on. His will is being done because you're praying to the devil. God don't need you to feel whining and carrying on. We are already free. And that's why when you wake up, you can't judge your fellow man because you're going to see the same devil that was controlling you is controlling them, and they cannot help it. They can't see. I once was blind, but now I see. Just, live your, just let go. Let life happen. He'll fix it. As a matter of fact, it's already fixed. He'll destroy the darkness of the devil, the spirit of the devil. So let the fear happen. Don't try to avoid the fear. Let it happen so it can die. In order to live, you must die. That thing got to die if you want to live. That's what Christ went through. Same thing. And so you got to let yourself go down into hell and you'll rise. And you'll live right here on earth. You don't have to wait to die physically. So feel the fear. It's not yours. Live with the fear. Don't try to get rid of the fear. And the light of God will get rid of the fear for you. Because it's a spirit. It's the spirit of the devil pretending to be God. He, he interpreted the Bible for you. You're asking for a, a car. He'll give it to you. The devil. He'll give you a car to keep you away from God. And then you'll go to church. And at your testimony, come on down, give a testimony. I need a hundred dollars. <laughs> and I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord gave me a hundred dollars. John came down the road out of nowhere, Lord, and John gave me a hundred dollars. I said, praise the Lord, and they still have fear yeah. because the devil sent the hundred dollars to them, and they give it to the devil the glory for it, thinking they're giving God. I had fear. I needed some. I had a honeyated disc and I ordered some of your oil and your cloth y'all heard the people say that and I put that oil on me with that holy cloth and the Lord healed me <laughs> <laughs> and then you go home you take so much medication because you're scared the thing's still there <laughs> and you didn't, couldn't tell the preacher I, I was just lying because you don't want that bad to preach it and you don't want to look embarrassed the devil got you. It's not real. Right. This is an illusion that you're living. Our bodies is just an illusion. He's here today and gone tomorrow. Nothing out there is real. The body is just, it's going to fade away too. Don't worship the body. Take care of the body, but don't worship it. You know what I mean? It's an illusion, so feel the fear. When I tell people to go and forgive their mothers, uh-uh, I can't do that. I'm scared of mama. 
Or I may hurt her feelings. Or she did this or did that. Mama was supposed to feed you. She had you. You know, old mama and something because she fed you? What the? Ain't that dumb? Mama didn't call up to heaven and say, Louise, me and Alice going to make a baby. And it's going to be you. <laughs> and so when you come down, we need you to take care of us. <laughs> and then you made a promise from heaven. All right, mama. Y'all make me, I come down there now, I'll take care of you until you die. <laughs> and you hate mama. Pushing around in a wheelchair, wishing she her up and die. <laughs> come on here, old lady, why don't you just die? <laughs> That's what you're thinking, right? But you act like you love her. Oh, come on, mama. Mama all in the way. <laughs> she want another piece of chicken. You don't feel like getting up from the table. Because you eat your chicken. I'm your mama, you better get up and get me some food. <laughs> Won't you die? <laughs> but anyway, I, I know I saw a couple of hands, so I'm gonna let make it short. But this is all an illusion. It really is, and it's in the imagination. God said, bring every thought into captivity. My children shall know me by my voiceless voice, not the talking talking mind. <laughs> The talking mind is of the devil pretending to be God or pretending to be you. You do better by not thinking at all. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to think except for practical thinking. Build a house. Once you build a house, it's done. Mm -hmm. But feel the fear and stop overreacting to it. If someone says something horrible to you and you start shaking, right? That's that shock that you need. Don't feel in the shock. Let the shock happen, take the shock, and the earthquake will pass. <laughs>